TN Artist presents How to Paint a Technicolor Planet in Art Rate 5. Hello, everybody out there in YouTube world. TN Artist here, Brett Hadlock, coming at you. Wanted to show you some stuff I was working on. Decided to do a little bit of practice, so I thought I would show you this. This is sped up about three times to the normal. Um, what I did was I started with a, uh, as you can see, a square background here and just started laying in some bright colors. I'm using the custom brush and um, the setting I have here is on the bubble uh, setting because I really don't care what it is. I just want some random texture thrown in, but I really just wanted to play around with color more than anything on this and get a feel for it. So what I'm doing right now is just laying in some color and then I'm going to go and grab the palette knife next, which I'm doing right now, and go over that to start uh, really kind of smearing it all together. And like I said, this is about three times the speed. Uh, I spent about 45 minutes on this, just practicing, playing with different things. Um, wanted to kind of see how colors blended together. And I only use four layers here for this whole thing. The background, which is black, which is on one layer. Then this colors, these colors right here, which I'm laying on a separate layer. And then I'll start adding another layer after this and then another one after that. So... I uh, wanted to just kind of show you, you know, sometimes it's fun just to put down some color and play around with it, not really overly worry about it too much. So that's what I started doing here. So I'm curious, what do you guys think about stuff like this? How do you practice? Do you get in there with Art Rage and just um, play around with colors? Do you practice at all? Uh, for me, sometimes just setting aside time to practice can be one of the hardest things to do. But it's also one of the most rewarding things I can do. So... Um, you know, that's what I wanted to do here. So as you're laying in colors uh, for this scene, it's a space scene. There's going to be a planet and these clouds. It's going to be a nebula, uh, kind of a like a planet if it, were, <clears throat> if it were inside some gaseous forms around it. It could be a moon. It doesn't have to be a planet, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. Basically, an object floating through gases in space is what this is. So... Um, you know, as I was sitting here playing with the colors and kind of getting a feel for it all, I wanted to start thinking about shapes. And this is one of the best ways to make clouds for me personally, is just throw in some random color uh, and shape. Normally, if I'm doing just a cloud, I'm not going to use as crazy colors as these are. But um, I really, you know, throw it in there randomly as far as like the letting the custom brush do its thing of throwing in texture. And then I'll smear it back out with the palette knife like I did. And from there, go and start looking for what I see as natural clouds and do that. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm laying in the highlights for cloud areas that I've seen. And then I'll go back with the palette knife and kind of smooth it out and blend it in. And as you can see, it starts to build up that cloud shape and um, give you more of a defined edge and ethereal feeling to it. So... Um, you really want to, when you're laying out clouds or laying out gases like this, think about, oops, sorry, um, think about the, uh, the layout of what you're doing as far as with the clouds. You know, which direction is the light going to be coming from? For this, the light is primarily, in my mind's eye, is primarily going to be coming from uh, kind of the upper left. And so I'm trying to distinguish some soft patterns here and there for that. And I'll start breaking it down even more. But the other thing I'm doing with these tiles, uh, when I'm painting these like this, I'm also thinking about, well, can I put this on something? Can I put it on a mug? Can I put it on a, an item that I could then repurpose and sell? Because it's always kind of amazed me when I'll do these practice pieces. Every now and then I have somebody that just absolutely falls in love with them. And so I sell them. You know, and if you haven't done that yet, you can put it on Redbubble, you can put it on Society6, you can put it on Zazzle. There's a lot of different places out there that you can do so. And if you ever want to see my work, I've started re uh, submitting things to those platforms, and I have the links below for you to take a look at. But I would love to see what it is that you do. And so leave a comment below with any questions or with any links to uh, artwork you're working on. So one of the things I wanted to do here that you saw where I just did was I vignetted the outside edges with something dark to pull your attention to the middle. And a vignette is a soft opening of color uh, that kind of fades in. So here what I'm doing is I'm using a stencil from ArtRage and um, 
you can reverse it and go back and forth. So I've, what I've done here is I've got it set up there. And then I take the selection tool. This is a cool little trick. I take the selection tool and select inside that red area, which keeps me from over spraying or over uh, brushing outside the stencil I want to use. And then I can really have fun and play around in this. Now this is on a separate layer, but I just take and smear paint in because what I'm going for here, and right now I'm using the stickers uh, spray brush here, and that is uh, moss, I believe, that I'm using here to just get color and kind of a, a feel for it. And then adding in just random blobs of paint because after I do that, I'm going to go back with um, even more textures and more colors like you see here and start truly defining everything out. Now, it looks like just a big blob at the moment, but by laying in these textures, I can then go back with the palette knife and just smear it around and start getting some really interesting shapes and colors and, and twists and turns. So, um, this is a great way to, you know, get like a moon cratered uh, planet or something like that and just playing around with it. So that's what I'm doing here is just throwing in random colors and random splotches. You're still using the sticker sprays. I switched between different ones and I, and I got to think, well, what would it look like if there was like a uh, maybe an asteroid had hit it or something? And, and so I left a big crater. So um, it's kind of what you can see going on up there in the upper right side of it so yeah by taking the selection tool and marking this off it makes it so much easier to sit there and play around with it and just have fun you know that's the great thing about this is again this is just a practice piece you know maybe i'll make a print of it or sell something out of it if somebody likes it but whatever you know the key thing here is just practice 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 because practice doesn't make perfect but it makes better and that's the thing you want to keep doing is pushing yourself to get better every time so the tools I'm using here, again, sticker spray, custom brush, and oil paint, and the palette knife. Primarily the main ones I'm using. And I do use the airbrush a little bit later on to kind of do some of the clouds. And all I do is just use the tendrils setting. I'm not playing around with the settings on these a whole lot, to be honest. I'm just um, letting the brush do the, the work, you know. Uh, I have gotten into doing more stencil work. And I've had a couple other pieces I've put up there. If you haven't seen them yet, jump over to the Facebook group and take a look there. It's a private Facebook group. The link is below. But definitely jump over and join us over there because it's a great way to um, see some work and, and share and stuff. It's just a, it's a new group. It's starting out and kind of growing. So um, this right here, I was trying to, I wanted to kind of a backlit halo for this. And so I was playing around with it and, and uh trying to get a good feel for it, so i got to remove the stencil and take a look at it. But um, after I did this, I thought, you know, I should have just gone with a larger brush for the airbrush and then just done that over the stencil. But I was trying to work my way around it and do that. So um, right there, I'm using the custom brush. Uh, there's a setting in there for, like, snow particles, and so I'm using that to make the stars. I've since made a different stencil that I can use instead, and I get a much better look for it because uh, right after I did this I uh, actually put that stencil together so I may share some of those as well um, but yeah I mean you know so you can see here that really gives it a nice 3d look having that backlit and then um, but it, it looked a little too cut out so I wanted to go over it with some more clouds and some more um, ethereal vapors kind of creeping around it. So that's what I started doing here. And then just kept playing with pushing and pulling the lights and, and darks, and it kind of starts setting everything back into it. One thing you can notice is the cloud that's over, going over the planet right there, um, just barely going over it. You can still see the texture from the planet under that. So if I were doing this for a commission or a professional piece, I would probably go in and flatten that out a little bit so that it's not as obvious. And then uh, here I wanted to bring in some more highlights. And the best way to do that is to throw, if you're trying to keep it thin and lightly, you know, kind of build up a subtle background, you can see you do what I do here, which was smearing some oil paint and then take the knife brush, and, I mean the palette knife, and smear it around a little bit and it gives you that vapor kind of a look. It makes it almost look like the planet's emerging out from the cloud. There was a movie with it that happened and I can't for the life of me think of what it was. It may have been one of the old Superman movies. 
but we're like the camera zooming in and then up out of the clouds comes the planet up out of it. I can't remember if that was Superman or if that was a different movie. Um, and I mean old Superman, like old school stuff, you know, Christopher Reeves kind of stuff. But um, I don't know. So anyway, just um, pushing and pulling on this. And like I was saying before, if you haven't come over to the face gr Facebook group, it's a private group for art rage and uh, lessons and different art lessons. I'm hoping to to uh, do some more lessons, but I'm still trying to hear back from everybody to see what they want. So right here, I was playing around with trying to get some bigger spots for stars and trying to figure out what I liked. Again, I've uh, played around with some stencils and I've developed a few other ones that I like better than what I was using here. And I'll eventually go back into this and obliterate those <laughs> because I decided I just didn't like them and wanted to play around and push and pull some more stuff. So uh, you'll see me do that here in just a little bit as well. But yeah, that Facebook group, it's a pretty good thing going over there. And um, so, oh, one thing, I, I don't know how I forgot to mention this. I am running a giveaway for Art Rage. So if you want to participate, the link will be below. doesn't cost you anything to do it. Uh, I'm giving away a full copy, a full-blown version of uh, Art Rage 5. And to somebody that uh, wants to uh, participate in it, there's... Quite a few people that have uh, jumped on and are participating, but you know, you never know. You can't win if you don't enter. So I'll put the link below so you can do that. But I uh, encourage everyone. It's going to be a July Fourth giveaway, which here in the states, that's you know, July Fourth is how we signify freedom and and everything. So uh, it's like, hey, celebrate freedom with a free copy of Art Rage. So <laughs> I'm going to give that away. But make sure and join it and uh, join the giveaway. And the links below. So. And also, if you're liking what I'm doing here, if you like what you're seeing, if you if there's particular pieces that you want to see, uh, let me know that too. You know, I, I really want to make sure and uh, try and get more stuff posted, but it's easier to do that when I know exactly what somebody is wanting to see. And so leave questions below, leave comments, uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and, um, you know, just let me know what it is you're looking for. So back to what I'm doing here at the painting. Uh, again, I wanted to push it and pull it some more because it just seemed a little flat in some areas. So I started going in and adding more uh, lit up gases in the area and wanted to really play around with the colors and push and pull it. Because like I said, it's a Technicolor planet. And really, I'm just trying to play around with the colors and see how they look. I did this before, and I uh, got a really cool um, flame look that looked like something that was out of like a board uh, of a Vallejo picture or um, something like that. It just turned out really well. And so I was going to, originally when I was doing this, I thought oh, I might do that, but then I just, I'm going to play around with the planet. But again, just push, pull, look for those natural areas where you see there could be highlights. Look for areas that you can lay in some good thick color and put on some, uh, gradations by blending it out with the areas around it really soften stuff out but to me that that kind of gives the feeling that this planet is kind of breaking loose from this cloud of I don't know maybe it's a cloud of creation maybe it's just a, a planet below it that's dying and this is a moon coming around uh, I did want to soften this up a little bit right here but I couldn't quite get the look that I wanted with it so I just kind of kept playing around with it and then undoing it playing around with it and undoing it and then eventually got the softened look that I wanted but um, I wanted it to be a little bit uh, more ethereal looking, so uh, almost capturing motion kind of thing. So uh, it says layer six up there. I ended up merging some of those down and kept the names. So it had, a, it literally had about four layers of total and then came back down to one layer right here. And again, just blending in uh, highlights and, and Every time you put one of those layers of the cloud, it kind of sets everything back a little further and brings you a little bit more, uh, I don't know, a little bit more perspective, I guess, atmospheric perspective. So here's where I started using the airbrush. It tendrils out on its own on that setting, and uh, it just really kind of gives a good way to fade and then brush it across because I wanted a few more highlights. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you've gotten at least something out of it. So thanks for watching. Please remember, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with everybody else. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know what it is you're looking for. 
And again, have a fantastic evening or day or wherever it is where you're at. And I'll post the final pick uh, over in the Facebook group. Thanks so much. Again, make sure you enter the giveaway and have a great, great time creating something in ArtRage.